Mom, what's the project going to be today? The project is Wait. a stamped and stencil uh, coverlet. That's very exciting. I am I'm actually really excited about this. Yeah. I grabbed a bunch of different uh, textiles from my stash. They're old table dresser scarf, but I wanted a variety of textures. The, the French uh, bed sheets, uh, napkins that I just tore the edges off of all of these so that I have that frayed edge. And I tear them so that it, it runs along a nice straight grain. That way when I line these up later to sew them, they're not gonna be all wonky and, and they won't be like shifted and run off, off grain. I like these sprays of roses and I think that's just what I'm going to use. Go ahead and I do all my stamping first and then I'd come back and do all of my stenciling. I have a baby wipe handy and I am going to glove up here because I just got my nails done and I don't need IOD ink all over them. So I have just refilled my stone gray ink pad and let's go ahead and press down onto our stamp. I am not super concerned about this being a perfect stamp that's going on here because it's just gotta look old and off. Let's just start to apply some of these. We're gonna press down and without shifting, I wanna press all over this stamp and yes, you can see I'm going off the edge, but I like that. I want this to look like they were torn parts from old textiles. What you're also going to see is kind of how each of these different fabric types takes a stamp. The ones that have the finest weave, you're going to get probably the best impression with your stamp. A looser weave linen which um, is going to give us a little bit of a different effect. So play around with your textiles and practice on them to see what look do you like. So I am making sure that I don't have any ink on my thin mount because it's really easy to do. Press, press, press. Press, 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 and lift, and there we go. We have one done. You sound like you're teaching aerobics. I do. do I? <laughs> press, 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 lift, press, and lift. 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 Okay, I have just dipped into my stipple stencil brush. I love this thing. Yes, it's big, but I love using it, especially on fabric. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use one hand to really stabilize this well. I want my stencil brush to be rather dry-ish. That's why I offload so much. And I don't mind if this looks a little bit faded, just because I want a very faded and worn and old looking uh, image on here. And lift, and there we go. Like, how cool is that? going to offload my brush. I'm going to work most of that paint off of the end of the stencil brush and in, incorporate it throughout the surface of that brush. But I want it pretty dry. The more randomly you can place these stencils on here, the cooler kind of effect you get, at least for me. Now you could also center these up if that's your thing, go for it.
Our special collection of German grain sack stencils are available at ellenjgoods.com. The link is in the description box below. Ludwig Stahl one yeah, is uh, one of my faves because um, my great grandmother, Minnie Stahl, came to this country. Check out this link to watch a video where I explain all about our special collection of these German grain sack stencils. I do want to show you like how I would put these together. Stitch these wrong sides together so that I do have the frayed edges showing. And I would just lay these out going in all different ways. But that's what's so like easy about this too is honestly you can just rip them. Now what I want to do is I want to piece these together. Um, of course you can make them, you know, all perfectly even and so forth, but you can also tear them afterward. I just didn't want it to be like square, square, square. It, look at, I can just literally adjust this that is pretty cool. as I go. never thought I'd see the day when L&J Goods would be bringing out a sewing machine. So look, they're gonna line up in different ways, but I will lay this all out, and then I'll make my strips accordingly. So I'm probably going to do this, um, I wish I could give you a measurement, but I think it's so, it just depends on what you so want to cool. use it for. And after I get my lengthwise strips done, I will sew each of the strips together. And and yes, there's lots of strings and there's all of that stuff. It, it's got to be, you know, something you like. If you don't like that kind of tattered um, thing going on, you could sew them right sides together and then sew your flannel on the back, turn it right side out. But um, I'm liking this look right here. I am. Mom, would you just show our text number real quick? Because sure, uh, she will surely um, send out to our text group a picture of the finished Absolutely. Projects. And Absolutely. I'll put the number here in the comments. For the backing of my coverlet, I used a white flannel sheet. I cut it to the same size as my coverlet and then sewed them wrong sides together. Finally, I added a salvaged linen ruffle to the edge of my coverlet. You can go, Mom. This was such a fun project, and I love it. You can find everything that we used at our brick-and-mortar store in Medina, New York, or at ellenjgoods.com. Okay, okay. Okay. I'll bring bird feathers, that's all I got.
<laughs> Girl. <laughs> it's all I got. I'll bring a snack. Seven and a half inches of snow, Rose. Oh my gracious. Mom is notorious though for not believing ever that the weather is actually going to be bad or dangerous. Not true. It's 100% true. true. A little bit of a, I don't know, what would you call it when JR is away? We sit on the computer and do boring work all day. Isn't that the truth? All day yesterday, 